Hey everyone, welcome to week 48. This is our first week after completing our first year. So yay for all of us. <laughs> so happy new year everyone, happy uh, 2021. This is gonna be a super exciting year for us because like we said from the beginning, this is the second and final year of this project in this manner as we know it, you know, maybe the nature of the project changes after year two because we want to keep this really beautiful relationship we have going with you guys. But as far as our painted lives as this project, it's gonna be two years, but that's super exciting. Let's not just say, no, this is our last year. No, 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 this is amazing. We have a year to go and uh, we're super happy that you guys can be with us uh, for the second year. So again, Happy New Year. We're glad to be back. We are honored to be your company. Hopefully you will consider us as being your company for this year. And we're gonna start off with a very simple thing. Very, very simple theme, painting resolutions. So what do we want to work on during this year in terms of painting? You know, and hopefully if we work on that, then it helps us grow as human beings too. But, you know, that's the end goal. So for this first day, for this Monday, uh, what we're gonna work on, or what I'm gonna work on, the, ideally, you guys are gonna make your own lists, but what I'm gonna work on is the weight of decision making. And hopefully, you know, with the video, I'm gonna describe a little bit better what that means. But um, let's see how that goes. Okay, let's get started. Uh, <laughs> First off, Happy New Year to everyone. Here's to hoping that this new year comes with our ability to overcome whatever series of new challenges uh, life puts in our way and that hopefully painting can have a place in our life where it can aid us in trying to know ourselves a little bit better. So instead of thinking of the act of painting as being this action that its only purpose is to create more paintings, hopefully in the future, more beautiful paintings, better paintings, greater paintings. We understand painting as a companion that is teaching us about ourselves. You know, every single time we sit down and paint, we learn a little bit more about ourselves, about what has shaped the manner in which we see this world, about how we understand our place in this world. And I think that actually is the road to becoming a better painter because, you know, essentially we can become better human beings and better painters, you know, fits into that definition of becoming a better human being. So that is our hope for all of you guys. Understand the act of painting as something that can be done in a quotidian fashion, something that eventually can be part of our everyday life it becomes as normal as every other activity that we do in our lives and that we let ourselves identify the benefits of painting regardless of the way we judge the quality of that quote-unquote finished you know product none of that really matters if we just concentrate on the 30 minutes or a couple of hours that we can devote each day each week or each month it doesn't matter the length of time if we can be conscious about the things that we're gaining through that moment that we dedicate to self-reflection through painting, then only great things can come out of painting. And we don't just judge it as successful if it creates a successful painting or as a waste of time if all we end up with is an unsuccessful painting. Ideally, we want to put ourselves in a situation where painting is always something that we can enjoy, that can become a teaching platform, not only in the road of becoming better painters, but more importantly, in the journey of self-acknowledgement. So I thought that as a reminder of what lies behind the way we understand painting with this project, we would do a very quick look back at last year and do a... a very succinct uh, year in review. And in order to focus on what is going to be the theme for this week, which is resolutions, you know, what are we hoping to better in our painting? What are the elements within our painting that we feel we need to work on? And what are our plans and what is our vision in order to understand this year as potentially becoming a workspace where we can 
you know, try to get closer to those ideals that we are understanding and uncovering in our painting. So having said that, let's talk about, you know, the first year of this project, because I feel it's actually very, very important. And while I'm talking about what my discoveries and my shortcomings were of last year, I invite you to do the same. And I know it's very hard to try and extract what happened in painting from the universal context of last year. And it's hard to even feel good about having made discoveries through painting in a year that was almost like universally considered as something that was daunting. But let's try to make that exercise. I know that we almost feel guilty trying to find the good within the bad, but I think it's also very, very healthy to do that. We are not in any way trying to make invisible all the things that were terrible. But what we're trying to do is push ourselves into saying, okay, not everything was terrible, not everything was horrible. What were some of those good things that happened? For us with this project, it was really trying to understand what the essence of the project was and trying to solidify that essence throughout the year. So in many ways, and I I think I've said this before, we didn't really see it as a project that would go just from painting to painting. It wasn't a great project if it produced great paintings and a project that was kind of slowing down and tripping on itself if the paintings that were produced were suddenly subpar. It was very hard for me to teach myself to see this project as an ongoing process. I told myself, okay, I actually don't have time, and while this may sound bad, it's actually a good thing, I don't have time to slow down and to look back and say, wow, that was a nice painting I made. I should just look at it and learn from it and cherish it and perhaps even consider keeping it and doing another one for the project because this one is actually special. No, it was actually very good because it felt like this was a train going like 300 miles an hour and I couldn't afford myself to have time to say, okay, what just happened with this painting? Perhaps I'm doing something important or different. No, it was just about turning the page. And I think that that's some of the healthiest things I've ever done with my own painting. Just learning that painting is the succession of all these actions. Painting is the accumulation of all these paintings. It's not meant to stop. And again, this is my journey. Whatever I'm describing here is absolutely personal. It's just particular to the project and the moment of life I've actually put myself in. So I don't expect everyone to have the same vision of painting that I do, but I hope that in the way that I describe what is going on in my life, we can eventually kind of ignite that curiosity so that you can look back and identify those things within your own painting practice. So what I noticed was that by just moving along all these paintings very, very quickly, they start to become the same. And by saying that they start to become the same, where I just view them almost horizontally, there's no peaks and valleys, I just see the same. This is just an enormous plane in front of me. What is kind of cool when that happens is that every single moment of painting you understand is something that you can cherish, every single one of them. So yeah, I still have that instinct where I tell myself, oh yeah, I remember that painting and I really liked that painting. But it's a very passing thought. Like I let myself have that thought because I don't want to punish myself for saying that I like something. And certainly I don't want to give people the idea that I like some paintings, hence that makes them better paintings because we are trying to socialize the act of painting and understand paintings as being exactly the same. Their value is the same. I mean, their economic value is exactly the same. They're all worth the exact same amount, but the personal worth is exactly the same to me. So there are no good paintings. There are no bad paintings. I certainly understand a lot of those moments as being challenging, uh, some more than others. You know, some moments kicked my ass. I have to express that very honestly. It's a reminder that painting is never going to be easy. It doesn't matter what level you think you are. It doesn't matter how many paintings you have, you know, in your catalog. None of that really matters. So it's a very cool reminder. Those moments where I challenged myself and I stumbled or those moments where I thought that I was going to do really well and I stumbled also. And it's also really cool to say, wow, I put this challenge in front of me and I was able to overcome it and to know that I have that in me too. So there's this wide range of emotions and possibilities that are 
inherent to the act of painting that remind you that every time you sit down, you can have a very enjoyable exchange with painting where it produces a really nice result and you think that everything is in balance and everything worked out. And there's going to be moments that are equally important that are going to show you that, no, you don't have the amount of knowledge that you need. No, you don't have the amount of experience that you need. No, you don't have the connection that you thought you would have with your subject matter. And uh, those moments are going to be painful. So there's the good and the bad. And I find that wonderful, to be honest, because that's life. Every single day of our life, even if we work on our peace of mind, even if we have the most amazing, hopeful outlook on life, it doesn't matter. You know, some days are shitty and some days make us feel like crap and we can have the best attitude and the whole world is going to be set up against us. And we're put in this position where we have to overcome all these challenges. And sometimes they're going to feel like a million tons on top of our shoulders and they crush us. And, you know, we barely have the strength to get right back up. And other days we're going to feel like the world is smiling on us and the universe wants us to triumph and wants us to move on and wants us to be radiant and hopeful. And I don't know, I guess I'm far more accepting that painting can be those two things. And I think that the reason that I've become far more accepting of that truth is that I don't want to punish myself when I do something that's not great. If my expectation is always to do great painting, great painting, great painting, then every time I falter, and I am going to falter, that is going to be not even a possibility. That's just going to be a plain truth. So every single time I falter, I can't just beat down on myself. I can't just feel like a hack. I can't just feel like I'm not a great painter. I'm not creative enough. I'm not working hard enough. I don't want to be mean to myself. I don't want to see this act of painting that I truly see as being inherently wonderful. I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't want to let it become a source of pain for me. I don't want to have a bad painting or a succession of bad paintings become this thing that I resent. Because for me, painting is good. Everything that can come out of painting is good. So why am I going to charge it with this power to be able to damage me, to be able to inflict pain on me? I, I don't want that. So... I think that last year taught me that it, it was never about making nice paintings. It was never about pushing myself doing all these sorts of paintings. No, it was actually just inserting the act of painting into this daily ritual accompanied by an act of self-reflection, which are these voiceovers with the hopes of painting becoming kind of invisible, you know. I don't want to notice myself painting. That, that I think that that is my biggest goal. I, I really don't. I want it to be something that is uneventful and something that doesn't really seem all that amazing because I think in doing so, in understanding it as this perfectly balanced action that fits beautifully into my life, then I can finally see all the benefits from it and not pay attention and stop and be almost hyper conscious of all the shortcomings that are becoming visible because of it. So I know it sounds a little weird and sometimes when I tell it to myself, I'm even a little bit hesitant when I utter those words. But I think that the more I paint, the more I'm in love with paint, the more I respect this painting act, the less painting matters to me. And I know it sounds strange. I, I really know it does. I don't know, but I think that for some reason that seems to be where my mind is headed and where my experience is headed. So I want to care so much about the making of these paintings that in the end, the painting itself has no value to me. Now, some people would say you're being so stupid because you're trying to sell these paintings. And if you're trying to sell these paintings, don't ever say that a painting has no value to you because now you're conditioning this product and making it seem like it has no value. So who is going to want to buy something that has no apparent value? And I don't think any of those things matter. <laughs> I, know, I know that that goes against the commercial side of painting, but to me, there's far more important gears sort of turning in the background where the end goal 
can't always just be selling something and selling a lot of something in the hopes of then having this product become eventually unattainable. It warrants a price that nobody's going to be able to afford. I really don't care about those things. You know, when those thoughts creep into my head, I almost tell myself, yeah, I know that these are things that we have to live by because people do need money to live. I need money to pay rent, to pay for my kid's school, to pay for my kid's food, pay for my kid's clothes. You know, all those things are real, and that's unfortunately the price you pay for being alive. But when I'm painting, I don't want any of those things to be infecting the act of painting. I just don't want to think about those things. They can't matter to me. It's a very backwards way of understanding painting. It's a very almost inefficient way of, of seeing what I do professionally. And strangely, it has become the way that painting has been teaching me about what it really means to me. Because when I strip it of all those things, you know, all that dead weight, when I just take all that crap out, I'm just left with this act of me painting, of me trying to find that reason behind my wanting to paint. And when you start navigating that question, why do you paint? Why? I always go back to this example. If you were on a deserted island, would you paint? And a lot of us would say yes. And if you could be there for a year and produce a year's worth of painting, you know, you would have all the materials you need to produce one year's worth of painting. But the condition is that you can't take any of that back. Would you still paint? And many of us, I think, would say, yeah, yeah, I need to. I think I need to paint. Well, why is there a need to paint? You know, if you could be in this island and maybe produce some of your best work ever, but you have to leave it behind. So nobody is ever going to see these paintings. Why would you be so certain that you would paint? Because in my mind, there's no question. I, of course I would paint. I mean, if all my survival is worked out, like if I have a cave that I can sleep in, if I'm able to procure food and if I'm able to produce fire every single day, then of course I'm going to paint. And if I make some of the greatest paintings ever, that's fine. That's fine that they belong to this island and nobody will ever see them. And it's not going to be my job after that to then narrate these tales of the greatest of paintings that nobody will ever see. No, I think that that year that I would spend on this island would just be a year worth of self-reflection and of self-acknowledgement, learning about myself through painting. And I think that I can't quantify the value that that would have for my life. So I think that when we ask ourselves why we paint, we have to come to an answer and we have to be okay with that answer. You know, if you paint just to make money, that's perfectly fine. Just tell yourself that, you know, and if somebody asks, oh, I just want to make money. I make a really good living. I think I'm good at painting and I make paintings that people like. And I love selling my paintings at really high prices. And I love having a comfortable life. And that's it. And I think that there's absolutely no problem in that. But you have to be honest with yourself. You have to know that that's what you want from painting. And I think that what I've noticed from this last year is that I want very different things from painting. And I don't expect people to share the values that I recognize in painting and to deem them as higher as the ones that they've established for themselves, that they've established for their own careers and their own painting practices. No, not at all. Whatever I find in my journey is not to be turned into dogma. They are just learnings from an experience that is entirely my own. That's about it. I hope that people can understand and respect that. Because one thing that we've encountered with this project is that people wish that it was something else, wish that it was something bigger. So for example, um, there's a lot of people that tell me, I wish you would paint bigger. And I wish you would take more time doing larger paintings. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah, but I kind of painted like that for the last 18 years. And I'm not saying I'm never going to go back to painting like that. But I'm just saying I'm immersed in a project that is not about those things. So longing or yearning for those things just doesn't quite have a place in the project that we're doing currently. So I'm hoping I'm not sounding like I'm dismissive of the suggestions that we get or that I'm trying to defend the project. It's just that I do want to in many ways shield it from things that it is not. And this project is not a million things. And if I saw it as all the things that it wasn't, then it would be a terrible project and I would never see worth in it. But what I'm trying to do is concentrate on the things that it is. 
and teach myself that the things that it actually is, the things that it holds dear, are things that I will eventually come to understand and respect and cherish, and that will help me grow. So if I am being overly protective, it's because I feel that that is almost like my job, that that's my responsibility, and I have to be faithful to all the goodness that this project has become for me. So if this year, if you see me kind of stubbornly going through weeks of paintings that I feel I have to go through, then hopefully you guys can just give me a boost and say, you know, keep going and keep pushing. If we all went through this project, it would have as many roads as there are people listening. Those journeys would be so vastly different. And that's what's wonderful about all of this. These are not meant to be instructional videos on how to paint. This is the way to approach painting. No, I don't think I've ever let myself fall into that trap of saying, hey, you're probably doing all these things wrong in painting. This is how you would approach a successful, efficient painting. No, no. And I think that if life has taught me anything is that we have to be flexible. We have to be willing to reinvent ourselves. And I think that that's at the core of, of this project. So, you know, that was about half an hour of attempting to make a succinct uh, year in review. But... Let's try to talk a tiny little bit about the first aspect that I want to concentrate on and that I've identified as a resolution. So hopefully throughout this week, I'll speak about five different aspects that I want to reinforce in my painting. So today is going to be about choices and specifically about the weight of making choices. And it may seem like a very obvious thing to concentrate on because Honestly, painting is just a succession of choices. It's an accumulation of choices. And what we see in the end can be a final, quote unquote, this abstract idea of a final layer of paint. But what it is actually is just a myriad of choices accumulated through a period of time. It could be 20 minutes or it could be, you know, 20 years. And it speaks about the manner in which, you know, those choices eventually configure this resolved image. So again, it would seem pretty obvious trying to emphasize something that is inherent to the act of painting, but I think it's very, very important for me. Because for the longest time, I think I've shied away from the sometimes unbearable weight that the choices that I make inherently have. You know, I say I shy away from them because I'm actually scared of making those choices because I'm actually horrified of the amount of responsibility that is within the nature of every single brushstroke, of every single mark that we put down. And I think that at my worst, that when I'm most insecure, I'm a painter that kind of dances through the problem instead of trying to actively make decisions to try and solve the problem. So I want to try and teach myself how to feel more comfortable with making the choices that I make on my palette become more visible to me while I'm painting. These brushstrokes are commitments that I make and I want to feel that weight and I want to feel what happens if again, those are easily visible for me to dissect. So I think today's painting is just a Again, a succession of brushstrokes that were meant to be relevant to the painting. Is it always going to work? For sure not. Sometimes the first choices that I'm going to make are going to be so off that the whole foundation of the painting is going to be weak and the whole painting is just going to topple over. So in many ways, I can't guarantee that because my mindset is going to be that I am going to take, you know, head on this challenge of understanding the responsibility and the gravitas that is behind every single choice that I make, that then suddenly my paintings are going to be full of these incredible brush marks, of this incredible mark making. No, not at all. You know, I know how to be realistic with these expectations, but I want to teach myself that I can actually withstand that weight, that it's not going to crush me, and that all I need it's just a little more peace of mind and a little more patience, you know, when making those choices and that I can't feel nervous whenever I'm lost and that I just have to paint with a rhythm of painting that is conducive to me identifying my own weaknesses and, and trying to not circumvent them, but trying to tackle them head on and saying, okay, what things can I do to try to get myself out of this problem? 
Today, embracing the power of the commitment behind the choices that I make through painting is something that's vitally important for me as a painter. And I think that it's a very powerful element in painting that I honestly have to work on. So I think just telling myself, hey, just be aware of this every time you paint is for sure going to be a vital aspect that I need to uh, pay attention to in my own painting practice this year. So that's going to be it for today. We're super happy to be back. We're super happy that you guys are giving us a chance once again to be your company. For people that don't know it, this is a two-year project. I honestly don't feel that beyond two years is a project that can be sustainable. Uh, the main reason being this takes a ton of hard work. You know, both Danny and I just work our butts off seven days a week. And while I welcome all the wonderful things that are coming out of this project, I also understand that it can be exhausting. And I don't really want painting to become this thing that just becomes labor. So I think beyond two years, we may be able to morph this project into hopefully something else in order to keep in contact with you guys, because I think that that's a beautiful thing that has happened, which is that even though we are a small community, small community by social media standards, but I think it's actually pretty huge. But um, even though we are small, we're like a small family, we don't want to give that up. We think that that's a very cool thing that like, the relationships that we've established with the people that are super kind and, and helpful and support us, we want to give back. So we'll see, you know, ideally, and it's weird to say ideally, <laughs> because I think I, when people say ideally, this project will extend for 20 years. No, for us, ideally, it's just two years. It's just a project that has a finite life. So we made it through year one, and we hope that the second year can be equally as enriching and challenging. So we hope that all you guys can accompany us in the second and last year. So thank you guys for hanging out today. See you tomorrow. Remember tomorrow, and we're never going to change this, is Spanish Tuesdays, Martes de Español. You guys have had one year to practice your Spanish. So I'm guessing your Spanish is far better than mine by now. So work on your Spanish and we will hang out tomorrow again with another New Year painting resolution. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.